Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, working with ASAP Ministries. A very long time ago, God promised Abraham something extremely significant. Through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. God had a global vision. He had a gospel vision, but he also had a family vision. And that promise to bless families reached right down through the centuries to a Cambodian family of five who were struggling to survive. Thailand, there across the border, draws like a powerful magnet with higher salaries and all kinds of possibilities, especially if you can go legally. So the dad and mom of this family, Siap and Sophia, saved their money and borrowed $3,000 to get passports. They headed to Phnom Penh to finish the paperwork and they were thinking, our future's set. But at every turn, there was a demand for more money. They didn't have enough. They didn't know what to do. That's when they ran into Pastor Tirit, the man we sponsor, so he can be a pastor for the children at our feed and read schools and their families. He has reached out to so many, and I've shared before how he's led parents to Christ. So there he is. Tirit's just met this family. He's not sure how to help them. And then the thought comes, they can sell books. Now it was a strange thought because Siap and Sophia were Buddhists, and these are Christian books. Maybe, I think Tirit thought, because they would have to read the books to know what they're selling, they'll start believing in Jesus too. Then they'd really be excited and be able to sell well. He decided it was worth a try. You see, Pastor Tirit has helped a lot of the school children and their families make some extra money by becoming literature evangelists. The children who want to, they go out and they spend about two hours after school walking around the city trying to interest those people in health books, children's stories, and spiritual literature. They make about an average of $2.50 a day, and though that may not seem like much to you, it really helps. Do they spend it on candy and ice cream? No way. It's buying rice and fish, shorts and flip-flops for their families. You see, these are the children who used to dig through the trash to find something to recycle. They would go to bed hungry pretty much every night because their parents are so desperately poor. And our school has made a huge difference for them but their families still need a lot. That's why Pastor Tirit's plan has taken off. There are now 10 families that are selling Christian books successfully throughout Phnom Penh City. But back to the Buddhist family. The family who owed $3,000 can't get their passports and has a stranger trying to get them to sell Christian books. Because they were so desperate, they took him up on it. They read some of the books, he prayed for them, and they headed out. Their biggest boy, Pani, wasn't so sure about it. For two hours, they walked and tried and walked and tried and sold absolutely nothing. Pani thought, this is crazy. I, if we don't sell anything soon, in that restaurant up ahead, I'm going to quit. The family stopped right there and decided they better pray to this new God for themselves. Maybe he was real. Maybe he could help them. They walked in and immediately customers bought two books. That really boosted their spirits and they decided to keep on selling. But when they came back and saw T-Rit, he got into their excitement with them. Then he told them that their children should start studying at the Feed and Read School. So there was Pani, fifth grade, Pana, second, Srenun, first grade. Everything was new. Soon Pana was learning stories about King David and enjoying the huge free vegetarian meal every lunch. Could he really eat all that he wanted? The teachers taught Stray Noon how to memorize the Bible. She learned Philippians 4.4 and started trusting Jesus to take care of her and her family. Mom and Dad, well, they kept going out to sell these books. They kept reading them too, and soon they were asking Pastor T. Ritt to explain things they didn't understand, and he started studying the Bible with them. Bit by bit, after seven months, they decided to give their lives to the one who had made them, the one who had died for them. Jesus became their savior and they were baptized. Pani has really grown too. He's a responsible boy. He works hard to sell books after school to help his parents. He sells about eight to 10 books every night. One day when he knew his parents were really needing money, he prayed, he said, Jesus, help me sell all my books tonight. My family really needs it. Then he walked into a restaurant and one man bought everything he had. Pani said, God answered my prayer. He is God. I'm going to spread the good news about Jesus. It was really fun for Judy and Jeanette from our office because they were there in Cambodia on the day this special boy got baptized. 
The book he especially likes to sell is called Building a Better Cambodia. He wants to see his poor country improve. In fact, he dreams of becoming a doctor when he grows up. Little sister has her dreams too. What does Faye Noon want to be when she grows up? A literature evangelist. Isn't that special? Maybe it's the miracle she's seen at home. Siap and Sophia were able to pay back their loan in only four months. They are so relieved that they didn't go to Thailand. The conditions were not as good as they had heard. Most of all, they might never have met Jesus. Now Sophia's sister is also studying the Bible because she's seen amazing changes in God's blessing in Sophia's family. So there it is. God's promise to Abraham has been fulfilled through Jesus to this family of five. Now they're God's channel to pass the blessing to another family. That's what God wants to do through all of our families. Do you have anything special you're doing as a family to reach out to other people? Anything special on Sabbath afternoons or once a month on a Sunday? Maybe giving Bible studies, passing out pamphlets, helping to feed the poor at a soup kitchen, or maybe doing a children's program in the park? If you are, I'd love to hear what you're doing so I can pass on the ideas. If you need some good ideas, I put up a bunch at the website reachtheworldnextdoor.com. But maybe you aren't doing anything together. It's hard to get the family together when everyone's so busy. Sometimes certain members don't feel like doing any outreach or service. Maybe you're not even sure your family would be a blessing to anyone. But I bet, as you pray about it, God will show you a way. He promised his blessings would touch every family, and I know he's ready to partner with you. Remember, he used that Buddhist family. He even converted them while they were reaching out. So go find a way to be a blessing as a family to families. Together, really together, let's reach the world ASAP.